<clears throat> yeah, hello and welcome to this video playing Mea. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, you don't quite know how this is to be pronounced. Okay, I played a French defense for for a change and um, yeah, maybe I get this Queen D5 line. I recently looked at some games with this line more coincidentally than anything else, but let's play it. I, it seems to me like you should be able to get a decent enough position even with limited knowledge. Let's hope this uh, assumption is <laughs> somewhat true. Yeah, this is actually one of the lines that I looked at some games I mean but <laughs> I, I honestly can't remember how it how it goes I think this first right I think this this makes a lot of sense the bishop coming to c6 and then eventually maybe to d5 okay so now yeah I think I'm taking now I go here yeah then knight b5 is probably not very I thought troublesome because of rook c8 and then a6 next yeah c4 was a little bit weakish weakish it was unprotected is what i'm trying to say unsuccessfully um what else do i have a6 is the the most obvious move here but i wonder if that is really yeah i wonder if it's best but if i wonder very long <laughs> the the time uh, situation will get to me at the end okay so bishop to c6 maybe that on the other hand um i mean i, I could try to play on the c file with with the rook okay is trading a bunch trading a bunch of pieces yeah isn't isn't this an idea again playing on the sea farm it's a bit annoying here yeah I can take SC2 falls no, like rook b1 he's not getting b7 back at all i just take this pawn okay so knight d3 probably so let's save the b pawn Okay, well, well, if I take it, isn't that an extremely fast pawn? Knight d3, a3. Yeah, it looks very um, convincing for black. A pawn basically will promote on its own yeah now the knight has no squares i can just play rook a8 next move and pick up the the piece sometimes i have problems to understand in those names what is actually yeah, it's often a combination of words and then I don't quite see what the combination is but I'm not sure if this makes any sense if you can decode that let me know yeah rook a8 next nda pawn 
In general, I think the, the queen trade line um, here with queen d4 is not particularly threatening. And the whole line in general with queen d5 is probably quite okay. I think this is the main reason why the Tarash knight d2 is not more popular. Basically, all of the top players, they play knight c3 when um, facing the French on move 3. The Tarash is less popular, but I think the main reason is this line here with queen d5, as the the isolated pawn lines are always going to be is very slightly better for white. There's now no much debate there. And knight d2, knight f6 is, is better for white anyway. I mean, it must be due to the space. It's not huge, but this is not something that white players, um, I think, um, would be concerned about. I think um, bishop d7 is normal here, but I'm only, I'm only trying this out and I'm not an expert at all. So bishop d7, the engine is not liking it that much early, like here yeah, with a very shallow depth. Okay, bishop g5 and taking, uh, what is the engine giving though, even depth 20? Queen to e3, hmm, okay. Possibly knight e5 then, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, again, I don't, I don't quite know. Bishop d7. I thought this, this looks very logical. Knight b5. Yeah, this I actually... Maybe you can question that, because the knight is not really, at the end, um, getting to, to a useful square. Rook c8 is helpful anyway, and... Yeah, bishop d3. I'm not sure that I was. I was not yet threatening to win that pawn on on this uh, on the bishop. Let, let's say he would go rook d1. Yeah, this is not an issue, as at the end there is this big fork. Or well, I can just put it on the board. There's this fork. But as the engine rightfully p points out, that this is an issue. Attacking this, covering this in the process. And now I actually threaten bishop f2 and rook takes c4. Like if this if this goes back, I should be able to win the pawn. Right? This is covered now. And the knight is immediately hanging, plus the rook is hanging. So that would win. So bishop d3 is fine. And then, um, yeah, the engine just briefly gave knight d5. This is a move that I was actually also thinking about because this is an interesting idea trying to play on the situation that the bishop always covers or has to cover the knight but I was thinking yeah, exactly c4 and I wasn't quite sure if this is really helping me you know, where where do I go now probably to b4 to connect somehow to the play before then I, I really couldn't figure out if this is helping me queen a6 is normal the knight is not really great on c3 anyway and that is the square that seems most likely now. Knight a3 looks looks weird. So we went back. Bishop c6 gets very normal. And now white decided to capture on f6, which I think is quite accommodating. It it if you take there, it only makes sense in connection with bishop e4 at all. Otherwise, I will get the bishop pair on top and play stuff like f5. In particular, f5 controlling e4 and then rook g8 where you get enormous play I and mean, potentially at least on the on the g file yeah if at all bishop e4 has to be the point but then there is bishop d4 as i played and this is just good for black you know, you only have um yeah you have no real solution anymore to this problem the engine wants to take and play rook a b1 yeah that is stronger and then what my opponent played but obviously it's quite comfortable for me the question here is what the most precise way of playing is um, taking on c3 I probably wouldn't have done yeah, I mean, it is comfortable I can take and play b6 I guess yeah that's what the engine gives b6 and then king e7 rook c8 trying to 
slowly get down, get at the pawns. There is, however, a likelihood that I will win the three pawns here against the two, and then we are stuck, or well, I'm stuck with four against three on one um, on one part of the board on the, on the king side. This is obviously better for black, but it's not clear if you can win. I would probably think about um, moving the king here, just king to e7, and trying to trying to um, increase the pressure a little bit. My like king e7. You have to um, look at knight e2. Yeah, in fact, knight e2, bishop back, and c3. Is a slight improvement for white. I mean, I'm on the d file. And then the engine gives this this line, and uh, yeah, this is a situation where rook d2 is is just is, this doesn't do anything. Yeah? You, you have to go back now because this is a funny way of trapping its own rook. Yeah. Okay. Probably. Probably I have to. Yeah, it's, it's a strong engine move here. Bishop to e5. Prophylactically moving it away so that knight e2 now can be answered by taking on c2. That's a good move. And f4, you get the check on d4. Mm, okay. Yeah, that weakens the whole position. Yeah? Like, if you do this... And now king e7, after knight e2, bishop b6, we do exactly the same thing as before. This is extremely helpful now because, you know, <laughs> the king is, is stuck and I get to invade on d2 or, yeah, d2, not or, d2 will be the square. The engine um, also gives ideas like this where the rook is coming this way or this way. Yeah, that's better f better defense for white. It's still very, very nice for black, but it's a better defense than the game. Yeah, I'm just winning the two pawns and for absolutely nothing. Okay, guys, thanks for watching.